Welcome to Disney Princess Deathmatch. I am Liz Stevens. And I am Sarah Cade. And we're bringing you today the biggest death match because me and Sarah might be about to butt heads about this princess. Uh, yeah, we're totally going to completely disagree because I thought that we had agreed very early on that Jasmine we was did. going to be the worst always. We totally agreed. We agreed that Jasmine was terrible and that she doesn't have a good, you know, she barely sings, she's barely in the show and she's really whiny and kind of bossy and that we don't like her. But it turns out that was 11-year-old self that thought that huh. and grown-up self, 30... Two, 33. How old am I turning next week, Sarah? Uh, you are turning 32 because you're four right? years older than I am and I am 28. 32. Yeah. Yes. So 32 year old self actually thinks that Jasmine is a total babe and I love her. She's awesome. And I kind of want to be like her. Well, it'll be really interesting to talk about that because I do have good things to say, but overall, okay. I think that she just is not, I mean, I just feel like she's not in the same caliber as the rest of our Disney princesses, frankly. That's fascinating. Okay, well then I'm ready to go. Let's start talking about this movie. Excellent. Let's do it. So we are talking about the movie Aladdin, which came out in 1992. And the first thing that I have got to say is that I had not thought about Robin Williams in quite some time. Yeah. And then we start this movie and yep. immediately the very first thing is Mr. Robin Williams' brilliant, yes. brilliant voice acting work. Uh, this uh -huh. is the first Disney movie where they actually had a celebrity stepping in to do some of the voice acting rather than just hiring you know, a voice actor. You know, I didn't actor. even realize that. Yes. Uh -huh. And so after this, uh, they realized, hey, you know what actors are really, really good at? Talking. <laughs> so from this point forward, we'll see uh, some already established actors who are stepping in to do voice work for Disney films and Disney cartoons. So that's really Which interesting. I personally think has the, has pros and cons because I love voice actors for what they do as well. Mm -hmm. So I like to see when we can share it a little bit. Yeah. Which which is what they're doing now. You know, it, it's basically shared between celebrities and voice actors. I, I completely agree with what you're saying there. So but, I also noticed with oh, this prologue, ahead. it was the first time that it wasn't just a voiceover. This was an actual animated character that was talking to us instead of just like that voice, that narrate, the, yeah. the narrator voice that we usually get. Yes, you're exactly right. Did you notice that the salesman only had four fingers? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the that, salesman at the beginning of this movie is the genie. It's voiced by Robin Williams, and he only has four fingers. I didn't fingers. know it was voiced by Robin Williams, but I didn't realize it was supposed to be the genie. Oh, yeah. That's very yeah. interesting. I d it's not explicitly stated in the movie, but because it is voiced by, he's voiced by Robin Williams, and he's only got four fingers, uh -huh. just like the genie does. Everybody else has five fingers. And that I noticed. I yes. did notice that the genie only has four. Mm -hmm. So this leads me to ask, are all of the dwarves in Snow White genies? Yes. All right. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> they um, could have cleaned their own damn house. That's right. They could. <laughs> they just chose Phenomenal not to. Phenomenal cosmic powers. <laughs> Itty bitty men. Um. <laughs> so the music for this movie was done by Alan Menken, Howard Ashman, and Tim Rice. Uh, Tim Rice Alan and Elton Menken John did the music for Lion King. Alan Menken and Howard Ashman did the music for Beauty and the Beast. And Alan uh -huh. Menken and Howard Ashman did the music for uh, Little Mermaid. And so I love the songs from this film. I realized, actually, that so the great. songs I love most from this film are all of the genie songs. Any of the songs that the genie is singing, those are my favorite. So yeah. uh, Never Had a Friend Like Me and then Prince Ali are just the mm -hmm. best. They're the best. Um, okay. So we start off with this salesman who is telling us about all, he's trying to sell us all of his wares, and then he pulls out the magic lamp, and he tells us that it's a special lamp, and it's really, right. you know, got this rich history, and then we get into our second prologue, um, and Ooh. where... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh -huh. where we get to, and I mean, I guess Ballsy it's, well, it may not be because I guess our inciting incident is Jafar finding the Cave of Wonders finally. Um, so yeah, maybe yeah. that's not a prologue okay. as much. But so we're there with Jafar and uh, Gilbert Gottfried as Iago. <laughs> Iago. Um, you know what? I thought he was really funny when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. No, he did a very good job. I just, I mean, man, mm -hmm. that man has a very unique voice and you can only stand Doesn't it for about just. an hour and a half, I feel like. <laughs> Um, yeah. and they're also there with the short little thief, um, uh, Hazim, Hakim, Kazim. I never, I, they said his name, but I missed it. It doesn't matter. He didn't end up mattering at all. He exactly. was not the diamond in the rough. He definitely was not. Was. Uh, I liked when Jafar called him his pungent friend. That made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> um, I just thought the Cave of Wonders was awesome. It so was so cool. mysterious and gorgeous and yes. really magical feeling. Disney was really, I mean, they had just come off of Beauty and the Beast, of course. 
course. Right. So they had to really up their game and show what they could do because we've gotten that gorgeous ballroom sequence. Yes. So I really think that they, they kind of showed that le- more... 3D feeling. Yes. And um, yeah, it just really came to life. Just a great opening. Yeah, I completely agree. They did a really excellent job with that. Um, the crave, cave, the whoops, I'm going to try that sentence again. The Cave of Wonders still freaks me out. It freaked me out as a little kid. Yeah. And it freaks me out as a grown I was afraid it was going to freak out Corbin when we were watching it, but he wasn't scared. But when oh, like yeah? the giant lion head or tiger head or whatever it is comes up out of the sand and like yeah. the cave, the mouth of the cave, that's... That's some pretty intense stuff. It's really freaky. And it just like eats up little <laughs> Kazim Hakim Hazim. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, bye, Felicia. I guess you were that important to the story. <laughs> um, yeah, this I wrote down. This guy clearly is not a diamond in the rough. You were exactly right. Um, yeah. He just mm-hmm. was kind of a slimy dude. Just rough. Uh, yeah, it was rough. Ha, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so then we get to, uh, we see Aladdin running around the city of Agrabah. And I was surprised yes. because he sounds about 12 years old. When I was younger and watched yeah. this movie, I thought that Aladdin sounded so grown up and sounded like such an adult. Mm. And I'm listening to it now. And I'm like, you're like a baby. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, and you know, he was Steve from Full House, right? I think I did know that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I definitely remember that because I had, you know, not a huge crush on Steve, but definitely was aware that, you know, that was the first show I was watching where like the girl gets a boyfriend or whatever, because I was Stephanie Tanner's age. So DJ was like the big sister with her cool, you know, football playing, letter jacket wearing boyfriend. So I had a little bit of a Steve crush, enough to definitely appreciate that he was voicing Aladdin. Mm -hmm. I was too young to really appreciate Full House. I know a bunch of people my age who like loved Full House, but it was just not ever my bag. So whatevs. Yeah. Um, One of these days I'll have to watch Fuller House. I heard good things. I've heard weird things. So I don't know. We'll just have to see. Like Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Whatever. The world is a crazy place. We're just lucky to be living in it. It's true. Yes. Um... (laughs) So Aladdin goes through and sings his uh, first song. It is like the most I want song ever. And because Aladdin is singing the I want song, Aladdin is the protagonist of this film. And Aladdin is more of a Disney princess than Jasmine is. Jasmine gets one song and it's a well, duet you can't and we'll say get that. There. He can't be more of a princess. I mean, he is more of a protagonist. I will grant you that. Yeah, I guess he's but not technically Jasmine more of a princess. Jasmine is but... a princess. Yes. Now, okay, I love me some Aladdin. I love him. I love that song. I always have mm-hmm. when I was a kid. It reminded me, did you ever play the Sega Genesis game? Of oh Aladdin? my gosh, we played it. Like, we were talking about this when we were watching the movie. <laughs> like, we played it on the Super Nintendo and the level yeah. in the Cave of Wonders when Aladdin's trying to get out the magic carpet it's impossible to beat like no one has ever beat that game i don't know if you know this no one in the history of ever has ever beaten this video game and no one can tell I don't me otherwise know if i got past the market that's the last thing i remember is oh my like gosh enough to grab apples and stuff i mean it was hard work yeah it was that fun though and i like those games the lion king game for the super nintendo i could yes. never get past the level with the wildebeest it was just impossible these games were impossible <laughs> oh yeah no i beat the game on lion king you did not no one ever has i did you don't even so, know what video games are. Uncool, Sarah. That's hilarious. Harsh, bro. <laughs> That's too funny. Well, congratulations. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. I'm pretty proud. <laughs> I don't think I've beaten a vi- video game since. Maybe. Doubtful. Maybe not. About that era, though. Yeah. Um. And so something really interesting occurred to me when we were watching this movie. Uh, I realized that this was the other Disney movie that played on a constant loop in my house when we were children. Yes. It was The Little Mermaid or Aladdin. Totally. And because See, I have a little brother. It was Beauty and the Beast or Aladdin for me. But yeah. Yes. We had those ones. And again, yeah, probably because of all the boys. The boys didn't want to watch The Mermaid one as much. But right. Beauty and the Beast was cool enough. And they loved Aladdin. So it was on all the time. Yes. It Which turns is, out. It was interesting Go ahead. I was just going to say, it's interesting because um, watching it fresh or it, it's so weird because you think that you know everything about it and you know all the words. Mm-hmm. And I did know a lot of the words, but then like we'd get to certain parts of the movie and I'd be like, how do they get out of this predicament? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't remember. I know what the song is coming up. And, right. you know, I know what that's going to be, but well, it, so turns it was actually out, very fresh. 
It turns out that I can quote approximately like 80% of this film. I was able to just like rattle off the lines as they were coming. And that shocked me. I had completely forgotten about all of that. Um, But apparently not. It still lives in my brain space. Yep. It lives in your brain. It did, yeah. (laughs) So uh, Aladdin jumps into the room with all the ladies wearing the pretty veils and the outfits. And when I was younger, I didn't understand why they didn't want to like get with Aladdin and what the situation was. And when I got older, I realized it's because it's a harem of prostitutes and he has no money. And that's why... That's why they it's kick the him out. the reason why. Yep. It's true. The things you learn when you get older. This movie did change drastically for me. Yes. Watching it as an adult. It's yeah. very different. It really is. And we'll talk about some of the parts that just like just sicked me out as we get closer to the end of the film where I was sure. like, I can't believe this is actually happening right now. Yep. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, one of my favorite jokes in all of Disney history happens in this sequence when Abu the monkey grabs the sword and holds it up to the guards. And the one guy goes, he's got a yes. sword. And the captain goes, you idiots, <laughs> we've all got swords. And I died. <laughs> it made me so it happy. It's great. It's so I brilliant. I love Abu. I think that he's just delightful. He's one of my favorite Disney animal characters. Oh, that's ever. awesome. I just, oh, I think he's my favorite. He's yeah, just great. He was really I, I would totally be buds with him. Yeah. Yes, I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, so then we go over to the palace and we're introduced to Jasmine and to the Sultan and to Jafar. Yeah. And this movie made me want a pet tiger so bad. Right? A pet tiger is pretty flippin' cool. And, and Raja, Raja is, is cool great. anyway. Raja in particular is super cool. Yeah, he is. he's amazing. So, so what did you think of our first introduction to Jasmine? Um, I thought that it was just fine. I thought it was really pretty. I really like the color palette that's going on. Um, yeah. yeah uh, I looked up her age. Jasmine canonically is 15 years old. Uh, so she was supposed right. to get married by her 16th birthday or mm-hmm. like all hell breaks loose, I guess. I don't really know. Like, yeah. you're, you're the sultan. Change the laws. Do what you want. Like, you are ruling over <laughs> this entire country with... A an iron fist, I think. But otherwise, uh, she wants to marry for love and not just for yeah. station, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, she doesn't have a mom. Her dad reminded me of Jane's dad in Tarzan. He was the most oh, British yeah. Middle Eastern man I've ever seen. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Well, yeah. I really liked her in this opening scene. I thought she really expressed herself Mm -hmm. very well, especially for a 15-year-old girl. She was not at all, like, I remembered her as being, like, whining and demanding. Yeah. But I didn't feel like she came across that way at all. No, that comes later. I mean, (laughs) we'll see. (laughs) If anything, I think that, that she just plays older. She seems like okay. someone who's like 18, you know. It's sure. kind of hard to reconcile that because she has um, l- like a like a queenliness. I mean, she's really very in control of herself and of her actions mm-hmm. and she knows what she wants. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought it was really beautiful when she freed the birds too. That was a nice little touch. Yeah, it was it was very sweet. And we find out that she's never left the palace ever in all her 15 years of right. life. She's like been here this entire time. So I can understand why, you know, I too maybe wouldn't want to be a princess anymore after that. Right. Yeah. Um. So we go from there to Jafar and the Sultan are talking. Uh, the Sultan says that Jasmine's mother wasn't nearly so picky, which I thought was funny. That is funny. That's yeah. a really great funny joke for the grownups. Um. And I think that the Sultan is a real dummy because when you take a single look at Jafar, what's the first (laughs) word that pops into your brain? He is a bad guy. It's true. He yes. looks like a bad dude. He's a villain yeah, all the way. Absolutely. An excellent villain. Oh, yeah. he's a great villain. He may be one but of my we, favorite villains. Yeah. We talked about how the guy who designed Jafar took a lot of um, his inspiration from Maleficent. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. In fact, the guy who, who designed, he, he had a, a birthday present that he gave to the illustrator of Maleficent that was a picture of the two villains. And uh, I think that like Jafar is kissing Maleficent's hand or something. It's oh, really that neat. is so it's super cool. cool. Yeah, that's really, really cool. neat. I like that a lot. I'm I'm into that. Yeah, um, it was neat. Yeah, that's pretty great. So I got to watch this. I didn't get to watch this movie by myself this time around. I watched it with some of the girls here at camp, including Julia, who is two. Who, oh yeah! With the intuition of a two-year-old, took one look at Jafar and said, "He's the bad guy." And I was like, "You're right, yep. sweetheart. He definitely, definitely is." <laughs> and if a two-year-old can figure it out, surely 
this British yeah. imperialist sultan could figure it out. <laughs> but granted, Jafar has been hypnotizing him with his weird cobra yeah, staff. Yeah, so. he's got magic working against him, you know. I guess so. And he's a little bit dotty, you know. He's right. he's sweet, but he's not just brilliant. Exactly. Yeah. So then we cut to the market scene next uh, after we see Jasmine sneaks out of the palace and right. Raja is a super good pet. Like, what a great tiger dog pet he is. Super cool. Helps her yeah. over the wall. Um, are there not guards, like, stationed around the palace? Like, if you, you can just... Would think that. But if she's been there all of her 15 years, she probably knows, like, when the change of the guard is or where they're not so heavy. I'm willing to let that one pass. I, I guess mean, they so. Do Maybe they her. don't do, like, governesses Only like an in hour later. this culture or something. I don't know. So I have no idea. Yeah, she just gets to stroll about all evening long figuring out that kind of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I guess she's smart enough. I mean, like, points to her for being smart enough to be able to sneak out of the palace and not get caught. Right, That's great. and she Excellent. totally takes initiative. And even though the plan is ill-conceived i think that's just because of her naivete because of growing up in the palace all those years right I mean, one her, of my notes here actually says i'd say that jasmine is making a dumb decision but she's never been out of the palace so exactly yeah and she and doesn't really know. i do i like her motivations mm-hmm. because she does want to to figure out who she is aside from her station which i think right. is really cool yeah I agree. I, I thought it was good. I liked that. So we get to the uh, we get to the market scene, um, and we get to the part where Jasmine takes the apple from the guy and hands it to the little boy, and then Aladdin runs up and saves her, and he's all like, "She's my sister." And then it occurred to me they look weirdly related. It's true. They but, have you the know, same that's just no- animation. Right, well, no, it's not though. They have like the same nose and the same color of eyes and the same hair color and the same yeah. skin color. Like they look like very weirdly related. <laughs> it just I it, suppose so. Yeah, I don't know. That just struck I can me. See that. Like you couldn't have done well, and I like that she got the apple for the little boy though. That shows her generosity. Sure. It shows her compassionate heart. That was a very princess moment. That's like when they're, you know, feeding the birds or right. whatever it is. So I liked her then. Um, I did think that Jasmine was fairly bright to be able to play along so easily with this complete stranger right? who says hey, Super she's bright. my sister. Yeah. And I like how first she's like, excuse me? And then she's like, oh, wait, I can do this. And she is awesome. Yeah, she's like, pretty great. The way that she plays that off is hysterical. She's funny. She's believable. It's she's a very funny scene. Very smart. Yeah, it was a funny scene. Yeah. Although it was not so smart that it didn't occur to her that surely one of those earrings was worth enough to pay for that apple. Like, seriously, I guarantee off, right? that giant stone in your headdress is worth <laughs> this entire market and then some. <laughs> But the but girl doesn't understand about, about economics. She's it's never true. been out of the she palace. She doesn't know about economics. Yeah, She's a she girl in know. a world where her only job is to marry rich. That's it. Uh, I mean, she mm, is Angelica yeah. Schuyler. <laughs> There's our Hamilton reference for the day. Uh, so then Aladdin takes Jasmine out on the town. Jasmine apparently has been taking pole vaulting classes at the palace. <gasps> that was amazing. How I did that she was do it? No, cool. I mean, listen, it's cool. It well, makes no sense. When did she learn to do that? How does she know how to do that? How does Aladdin know how to do it? Because he's been living on the streets for 15, 16 years. Like, you do not. I'm sorry. Where in the palace is Jasmine pole vaulting? Okay. Over the wall? No, because her tiger helped her out. (laughs) She saw him do it. And then she said, I can do that. And then she did it. And I thought it was awesome. And you can't take it from me, Sarah. All right, fine. Okay. Jasmine is Annie Oakley. And then she throws the pole back at him and is like, I'm a fast learner. That was amazing. That was a great moment. And he has that look on his face like, whoa. That was really cool. I liked it. <laughs> it's fine. I just, I I do see that it's a cool moment. I just feel like, narratively, where, I mean, I don't understand how she picked that up. It's like, like it's, Disney movie. Pole vaulting okay is, not, okay, fine, fine. We'll move on. <laughs> hey, do you remember when Ariel scaled the side of a boat, like, four times with just her bare arms? Yeah, because that's the only, <laughs> I mean, like, she's all muscle. She's a fish. What do you want? Like... <laughs> Okay, okay. Also, whenever you're in, well, I mean, I guess you're good. Anyway, uh, then we get to the, okay, so the guards show up, and then Aladdin turns to Jasmine and says, do you trust me? And, like, duh, you guys have been chilling out for, like, a whole day, and you're in a Disney movie, so you, I don't know why you're not married already. Uh, this yeah, is it's true. So Another far, one where she's following a strange man home. They well, however, that. this is the longest that she has spent with the strange man our princess has. Everybody else Fair had enough. a few moments. She's at least been with him. Like, I mean, if she left the palace true. 
She either left the palace at night, in which case she has been wandering all night until morning, or she left at dawn before the sun rose, which I'm more willing to believe because then we immediately cut to daytime at the market. So Uh she's at least been with Aladdin from like 10 a.m. to like... Or even 9 a.m. to like 6, 7 o'clock. I don't know what time the sun sets over there, but I mean, all day they have been together. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Uh, The guards show up. They take Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin realizes Jasmine's the princess by order of the princess, and she yanks her hood off. And, I mean, you've only got one princess, you guys. How do you not? But then I guess it's the Superman syndrome, right? Like, did you know that uh, before uh, Batman versus Superman came out that Henry Cavill, the guy who plays Superman, like walked around New York with a pair of glasses wearing a Superman T-shirt and nobody recognized him? So that's a real thing. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I love that he did that. Yeah. Sorry about your movie, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I liked, I liked too, that in that moment that she immediately does whatever she can to take control and take charge of the situation. She was very brave. She, she was, was very outside brave. her element, but she realized that, you know, she could she could do something here and she could actually legitimately help. Sure, absolutely. So she did everything that she could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She also ends up standing into... She also ends up standing up to Jafar a few minutes later, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Like, that guy is also very, really very cool. scary. So she stands He's up to him. He's pretty terrifying, and she is taking no crap from Jafar. Right, but then he tells her that Aladdin is being sentenced to death, and then Jasmine weeps over her fainting couch uh, over a dude that she just met. Um, yeah, Disney. Yeah, Disney. I guess we just got to whistle past that. Um, so then we see Aladdin in the prison and Jafar is there with Iago being his fake hump. I don't know how Jafar faked his bad teeth, but at this point I'm just being really nitpicky, I feel like. Uh, so we'll just skip. Well, he's like a sorcerer sort of, right? Yeah, well, uh, he's not a sorcerer yet. He becomes a sorcerer later. he, He turned into that. Yeah, but when he does the old guy, he like turns into that. No, I think it's just a And he has to become, like, the world's... Really? I don't know. It's not explained very well, is the thing. Like, I'm not really sure. Like, I think as a child, it took me many, many viewings for me to finally realize that that was, in fact, Jafar. I was just like, why is this old man suddenly wanting this lamp? Who is this guy? See, I always associated it with uh, Snow White and when the queen takes the potion and turns into That makes way more sense. And if we could have just had just a scene of him transforming, then that would be fine. Yeah. But as it stands, I didn't even notice. it's a little, it's a little yeah. weird. Yeah, he just, he looks yeah. very, very different. Um, I don't know, maybe he's bald under his hat. I guess we don't really see Jafar without his hat. Who knows? Maybe that's just the way he looks and he didn't put any of his, like, makeup on or anything. Could be. There's no Who telling. Knows? Very knobbly knees. No telling. So they get to the Cave of Wonders, and Aladdin is not supposed to touch anything. I'm assuming that the floor is fine, and you can touch the floor, because otherwise how do you get through (laughs) it? But he did technically touch the magic carpet. So magic carpet is outside of the rules of the Cave of Wonders? I guess so. Maybe because it wasn't riches and treasure. You don't think that the magic carpet is a treasure? No, I do. You're right. Yeah. I don't know. Narrativium, Sarah. Narrativium. Yep. Yep. Uh, somebody screams something about infidels. They also mention Allah a lot in this movie, and I uh-huh. feel like yeah, uh, you could do that and... in 1992. You probably could not do that in a post-9-11 world, which is really interesting. Is, yeah, it is interesting, and too bad, really. Yeah, it's just the way that things go. Uh, yeah. Abu makes the dumbest decision ever. You have one rule, Abu, do not touch anything, and what does he do? Oh, he's a monkey. He grabs the, <laughs> but yes. uh, I'm sorry, he's a monkey who can, like, basically communicate in garbled English? It's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true. yeah. That monkey can communicate better than your two-year-old son. So, I don't uh, know what you want. Three-year-old, and still yes. Yes, yeah. Or the one-year-old. <laughs> yeah, anyway. But, yeah, so Abu makes a really dumb decision. My note just says, Abu, you idiot. Uh, they break out. Uh, well, no, they don't break out. They try to break out of the Cave of Wonders, and then it shatters and turns back into sand, at which point Julia, the two-year-old I was watching the movie with, goes, poor lion, and felt really bad that he got all smashed <laughs> up and destroyed. Aww. It was very sweet. <laughs> That's sweet. And then we get Robin Williams. Robin Williams appears as the genie, and it is one of my favorite sequences in all of Disney ever. It's pretty great. Uh, yeah. Now, I have a question for you, Liz. Sure. Is the genie a being outside of time? Because he makes a neon sign. He dresses like a Scotsman. He puts a microphone in front of Aladdin's face. He pretends to be Jack Nicholson. He uh, pretends to be Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, He acts as though he is the flight attendant for an airplane. Um, 
What is, I mean, like, the genie is basically a god outside of time, right? That's the only explanation. I guess so. That's the only explanation, yep. I mean, really, the only explanation well, is that the they wanted some jokes, when, again, for the grown-ups who were taking their kids to see this movie. Also that, yeah. But, narratively... Well, but when Jafar, when Jafar wants to be a genie in the end, he... I mean, he is like juggling planets. That's true. So I don't think there's really anything. Do you that's just outside suddenly the receive like all? Are you? Do you become? Are you omnipotent as a genie somehow? I don't know. Maybe it not. Seems, Probably not omnipotent. That seems to be the case. I don't know. Um, omniscient? I don't know. Who knows? Pro- well, I sir, close to omniscient, all powerful. Well, not that all powerful. They can't make you fall in love, and they can't. Bring, well, and Genie says he doesn't say that he can't bring people back from the dead. He just says that he doesn't like doing he it. He says he doesn't. Yeah, he don't like doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So he must have done it at some point and it ended poorly. And that's <laughs> how we got zombies, it's very I guess. Creepy. <laughs> Uh, yep. The magic carpet is millennia old. The genie says, haven't seen you in a few millennia. So the magic carpet is at least 2,000 years old uh, or more. Uh, so is the genie. And I think the genie gets the best songs, is my other note, just again. Um, I love his songs so much. I think that they're really great. And then Aladdin cheats Genie out of a wish. Um, tricks him into Which getting them awesome. out of the Cave of Wonders. Aladdin's really smart. Yeah. And He's a smart, scrappy dude, and I like him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we cut back to Jasmine and her father in the palace. Jasmine proclaims her love for Aladdin, which she has gained after approximately six hours of knowing Aladdin. Uh, again, pretty good for a Disney princess, all things considered. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. all things considered, all I agree. Considered. And also, I would like to I would like to point back, too, for a second, to when they are first up in his little apartment thing that's overlooking the palace and everything, and they had their little exchange uh-huh. about how he wishes he could live in the palace, and she's like, uh, I wish I had your freedom or whatever, right. which is a great scene. They yeah. are adorable in it. And Jasmine is obviously wanting to be kissed in that moment and not afraid to show it. And I thought that was pretty cool, too. Well, I feel like that's a little forward for a 15-year-old princess, but... It was, but I'm okay with that. I mean, we've had some very demure princesses, and Jasmine is... She is getting what she wants. I guess so. Hmm. I like it. Interesting. All right. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, when she hears of Aladdin's death, She's, you know, you talked about her sobbing on the fainting count, couch. Yes. But she also sobbed by the fountain, a la Cinderella. Do you remember Ooh, that? That was a real throwback true. for me because that's what Cinderella does is she runs outside, she sobs by the fountain, and that's where the fairy godmother comes. So Okay, but she was sobbing like about like her dress and her life and everything, not over a boy that she met. That is true. Yeah. I'm just saying that it was a throwback to Cinderella, Disney okay, okay, style okay. wise, okay. Okay. animation right. wise. Excellent. So then we get the Prince Ali song after that, which is amazing. Uh, the genie can create life, apparently. Uh, alternatively, all those hundreds of people uh, just disappear from existence after the song is over. I don't really know. We don't really see what happens. Um, <laughs> they're there to sing, and then they are all gone. All that yep. gold that those people were scraping up in the road, leprechaun gold, is going to be gone <laughs> after the movie. Jafar asks Aladdin where he's from, or asks Prince Prince Ali, where he's from, uh-huh. and the response is, no place you've heard of, I'm sure, which makes Aladdin the original hipster, uh, which I'm into. <laughs> I'm sure it's further than you've ever traveled. Right, exactly. Try me. Julia, at this point, asked, where's the princess? Yeah. Because we hadn't seen Jasmine in a while. It's true. You don't see her too much. Yep. I do and like I that, that, that the last thing fair. she said, too, while she was crying by the fountain is, is, it's all my fault. I didn't even know his name. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty legit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And then she's about to have her other line, which I do feel like is pretty legit, when Jasmine comes yeah. out of the mineral arguing and says, I am not a prize to be won. And you're exactly right, Jasmine. Yep. And all girls out there, you are not a prize to be won. You are a person. Yep. You are not a thing. And you uh-huh. should be treated as such. So points for that. Definitely um, saying they were trying to decide her future for her. Yeah, she was, yeah. She was especially for a 15-year-old who shouldn't know better, but just intuitively understands that she is of greater value than her society is putting on her is amazing. Right. That's really great. Um, all that being said, hey, 15-year-olds, listen to your parents. Uh, not if they're trying to marry you off to the Grand Vizier, because all <laughs> Grand Viziers are evil. BTW, that's also a fact that I learned from this movie, is that any person who calls themselves the Royal Vizier is a bad, bad man, and he needs a mommy. Um, 
But hey, 15-year-olds, listen to your parents. But also, you're not a prize to be won. Okay. Um, I'm so confused. Jasmine's pretty sassy through this whole thing, which I like. She's just like all up in everybody's face, which yep. is, is pretty good. Uh, but Jasmine is won over by novelty, I feel like. She's won over by the magic carpet yeah. and, and won over by the city in the first place. And now there's this prince who is showing her something new. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, a whole new world, in fact, one might say. I I get and that though. I do, and I also I know you do. I know well, and I I do also think that it's it's great. It's a great show of her character when she is willing to allow the space for Aladdin to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. She's forgiving to him, like she recognizes him. When oh, she says, yeah. aren't you that oh, boy yeah. I met in the she's marketplace? she's not dumb. Yeah. She's and he's probably like, the smartest person in this movie. She is the smartest person in this movie. Yeah. And Aladdin's <laughs> like, no, no, I've never met you. I, you know, I've got servants that go to the marketplace for my servants. And she, and it, when he says that, do you trust me again? And she absolutely knows it's him. And right. that's why she goes ahead and does the, the magic carpet ride. Because, of course, she was right. always into him to begin with. I, I mean, I think the the fact that she got on the carpet and challenged him afterwards is like, I knew and tricks him, you know, I knew you were the boy yeah. from the marketplace and gives him a chance to explain himself. And then and he lies again because Aladdin is kind of the worst. Aladdin, He's building this entire relationship on lies. Yeah. And it's like, it was a mistake. oh, she caught me in this lie. I got to lie again. I have to lie now to get out of the first lie. And it's like, dude, come on. Yep. And she's a cool girl. Yeah. And, and she, I think, would be very as understanding as she could be, you know, if he would just tell the truth. I agree with Jeannie there. Right. Yeah. yeah, and you're right that Jasmine did recognize him kind of right off the bat. Yeah. To be fair, I think she's known like three dudes in her whole life. That's true. Her dad and Jafar <laughs> and the boy from the marketplace. Fair enough. Uh, then we go through the whole new world sequence, which is beautiful and lovely. Uh, that flying carpet is traveling at Mach 5 at least because <laughs> they all over go the place. to Greece, they go to China, they go to all kinds of places. Yeah. Um, and it's still nighttime and they managed to get back, uh, by nighttime. So yep. I, I don't, I, the only thing I can figure is that the carpet actually teleports along with it. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, certainly those places, uh, Disney magic are, is yeah, what I'm willing to attribute Disney it to. Magic. And, we'll and we can move on. I just do it's think it's kind of funny. It's a sequence though. I it's mean, really it's lovely one of the really best beautiful. things that Disney has ever done. I still hold up just about everything to a whole new world, which is oh, why. That's really Interesting. The lantern scene in Tangled moved me so much. And that's what I would tell people. It's the best thing I've seen Disney do since A Whole New World. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Man, I can't wait to do Tangled. That that's might be, be our longest one. episode ever. We're going to have a lot to talk about. <laughs> that movie is so good. And I love this song. The song. Oh, the song is pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's Jasmine's really only song. Timeless. But yeah, the song is great. I enjoy the song. It's not my favorite Disney love song, but it is really, really good. It's a uh, great Everybody one. that I know knows all the words. It's yeah. perfect for when you just want to bust out a Disney tune. Yep. You go to this one. It's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. It's, it's wonderful. Yep. Classic Alan Menken. It's excellent stuff. Yes, I do love me some Alan Menken, which yep. is why my favorite Disney films are The Little Mermaid and Tangled again. There you go. Yep. Um, so we get back to the palace. Uh, Jafar has completely put the Sultan under his thrall. Jasmine oh, wait, wait, wait. Super- We're skipping oh. them saying goodbye. Oh, yeah. Where the that. carpet makes him kiss her. Yes, which is adorable. Thank you, carpet. Because again, obviously she's giving him those come hither eyes. Like she is ready for her kiss and he's just derping around because he's just a market boy after all. He's doing his best. I mean... Would you want your 15-year-old daughter to kiss a derpy market uh, boy? Uh, hey, 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 we don't have to go there. Damn it, do we have to go there? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I would rather <laughs> that she decide that she wants to be kissed, decide by mm-hmm. whom and when she wants to be kissed, and then had some agency in it. Then, sure. Yeah. Then was just, you know, on a pretty crappy d- date where the guy tried to like slip her the tongue and she was like, oh, my life is terrible. Uh, I'm ew, just saying. Slip her the tongue. I've Gross. had those dates too. Sick. Oh, ew. So. I did not like that phrase. Sorry, dear. I'm just saying, I would like the scene better if these two had on their own decided to kiss and the carpet had not intervened and been like, oh, here's that extra 90%. You were oh, at the 10, here's the 90. they had decided to. He just gave him the extra boost and made it a little more enthusiastic. Disagree, but yeah. It's, oh, really? It's, it's fine. Yeah. Well, and then when she goes to say goodnight and she's like sashaying away and she looks over her oh shoulder Oh my gosh, when she has like again. the doomy eyes, like and, that's insane. It's... 
there's some parts of this movie that are a little bit uncomfortable when you learn that Jasmine is 15 years old. All right. Uh, no 15 year old going. girl. Okay, you're totally right. Her being 15, she is too aware of herself, her sexuality, yes. her, yeah, her agency. She's too aware of all of those things to be 15. Right. Or at least and to be a comfortable 15. And now we may be 15. being nitpicky because, again, I think the only, the, I don't think in any of these movies do they say how old the princess is. No, they do Disney, in this one. Well, no, it just says your next birthday. It doesn't say Oh, he just birthday. says next birthday. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think the only one we actually know about is Aurora because it was right. her, it was what, her 27th the... birthday. She looked almost 30. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that girl was not 16. Um, no. But yeah, but I mean, Disney uh, is the one who came out with the list of how old yeah. each of these girls are. Yeah. And so it becomes, and especially the stuff, we're getting really close to it, but there's a lot of stuff here at the end that is excruciatingly problematic. Yes. And because no, you're of Jasmine's right. age. And so we'll because get there. So age. yeah, it was. Can we just pretend a, she's 18? Because it makes her so no, much more awesome. No, we cannot. No, oh. if we're going to do that, then we can just pretend that all of these princesses are whatever. And then our... Our scoring system means nothing. All right. Mm. What is even the point? Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, we can just pretend that Snow White is better. Is problematic yep. yeah, there when we go. she's fifteen. <laughs> Dad gummit, I was liking her so much. I still like her. It's just oh no, that's what, yeah. Like it's if she was eighteen, it would yeah. be much more acceptable, and I'd be way more into it. But the fact that this girl is not even sixteen years old yet, it's just a yeah. little bit problematic. You know, yeah. and and no, I don't want to be. Fair. I don't necessarily want to be like, you know, body negative or like agency negative or like sex negative or anything like that. But like, guys, do you remember being 15? 15 is real young, real yeah. young to be like as aware of these things as she is. Yeah. And maybe it's, that, yeah, okay. it's just, it's a little, it's a little frustrating. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, now and especially and I because, maybe think that some of that we could, uh, we could possibly attribute to the culture you know, in a time where, Possibly, where girls were yes. getting married at a much earlier age. Yeah, it was I'm not, shocked that, yeah, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so then it, it wouldn't be considered out of place at all. In fact, it would be very appropriate. Uh, except that it would be even more inappropriate that she is now, like, kissing this boy and stuff because that, frankly, That's would have gotten her culture. stoned to death. Oh, so, frankly, it's just kind of, and I mean, mm. again, like, I don't want to get, like, too political or whatever. Like, obviously, we're talking about a Disney movie. We're talking about a fairy tale. Yeah. I'm, just saying that I apparently, uh, Sarah apparently prefers her princesses to be a little more demure. I mean, <laughs> and like, that's not all. I mean, like, you guys know some of the female characters that I love so much, like Buffy and Melinda May and like Wanda Maximoff and all these girls who I think are like Peggy Carter, who are amazing and brilliant and like very aware of their agency and like very aware of like their sexuality and like just in control of their lives. I'm just saying that for a movie aimed at like eight to ten year olds, yeah, maybe Jasmine is a bit feistier than I need her to be for my eight to ten year olds. Okay, I guess. And you know what? That's why I didn't like her. I think growing up, growing up, when I was a kid watching this movie over and over again, I just didn't understand her because I was a kid, and she did not behave like a child. She behaved like a woman. Right. So yeah. whereas Aladdin was very boyish, so I understood yes. what he was doing. And mm-hmm. so I was always just like, I don't understand why she doesn't like him. I don't understand why she's always picking fights with him. I don't understand why mm-hmm. she's always griping about things when her life is amazing. So that that is an interesting point. For a child, she certainly does not act or reason as a child would. Right. And again, obviously we're going through the Disney movies and when have any of these girls ever behave like children except when they're being bratty it's and then true. we pointed out and they were like but let's remember that ariel is 16 oh ariel says her age uh is 16 yeah, years old true. whatever yeah. but um yeah so so we can skip all of that so they kiss it's great it's lovely it's wonderful i i do think that it's sweet i just think it's weird that they're 15 okay uh, again if jasmine was like 18 years old i'd be way more on board with some of this stuff but um and we'll we'll get there here in a few minutes so the sultan walks in He's completely under Jafar's thrall, and yes, he yes. now demands that uh, Jasmine has to marry Jafar, um, which at first, because I had forgotten later in the film, I was like, oh, but he doesn't, like, want to marry her. He's just doing it to get the throne, so that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. And then we get to the last part of the movie, and we'll yeah. get there in a few minutes, and then stuff just got weird it and does. gross. Yeah, and it bothered it me when got I was a weird girl. And yeah. Gross. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it bothered me more as an adult. Interesting. Um so then uh Aladdin gets kidnapped by the guards. They somehow have strung up elephant Abu into a tree with only a net, the most magical strong net and tree in all of Agrabah. Aladdin and so they get 
thrown into the ocean. And this part drove me crazier than any other thing in the film. It because doesn't Jeannie make pops any out of the sense lamp at all. When you Ale- can't do, do what? it. It doesn't make any sense at all. They totally yeah, no, broke their it's rules. Complete, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's total, it's complete junk. It absolutely they is. Broke Aladdin rules. is in the ocean. He is drowning. He cannot speak. He is unconscious. Genie pops out a lamp and says, I can't help you unless you make a wish. Aladdin does not make a wish because he is unconscious, cannot yep. speak. His brain is dying from lack of oxygen. Yep. And Genie gets him out of the ocean. He gave him a freebie. So the yeah. entire conflict we have at the end of the film when Aladdin is like, hey, I can't wish you free. I've only got one yes. wish left. No, you don't, bro. You have yeah. two. Because obviously the genie can do what he wants. You did not wish yeah. to be brought out of the ocean. It was insane. It was very, very frustrating to me. Ugh, I did not like it. I did not yeah. like it. And it, it it frustrated me to no end till the end of the film. I was like, everything that you're saying right now is complete junk. It's, it's a storytelling it's problem. Yeah, It's you're a right. serious, serious problem. They get back to the palace. Uh, Aladdin pops back into the room. They get rid of, they, the guards come in and take Jafar away. And then Jafar throws down his smoke. He sees that Aladdin has the lamp. We've got Aladdin and Genie in their false conflict where Aladdin is saying, she only loves me because I'm a prince. And I do, right. like, what is Aladdin's, like, endgame there also? On top of that, like, what are you, what, you just need the Genie to, like, make you a pedigree or something like what is your what what are you saying she already thinks you're a prince and you're already lying your way through this relationship at a remarkable rate and it's going really well for you like (laughs) i don't understand well i guess that that having the genie like working towards keeping him a prince gives him things like you know the awesome parade that came through and and you know, if he needed the credentials, he could maybe produce credentials. Maybe that's what they're talking about. But he's only got it for like one more. Like if Aladdin thinks that he's only got like this one more wish, like I don't I just first of all, again, he doesn't. He's got two more wishes. Yeah. Uh, secondly, I just it makes zero sense to me. I have no idea what Aladdin's plan is other than like, what are you just going to have the genie around and just be like, hey, can you do this for me? I'm not wishing for it, but will you just do it? Because you're like, and and then that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's, it's total bupkis. It's complete. It's absolutely insane. I don't understand it. Iago Sorry, puts Sarah. on a funny mask and is on stilts and pretends to be Jafar. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Pretends he pretends to be, to be Jasmine. Jasmine. Mm-hmm. Um, and Aladdin runs out, leaves the lamp because he's a complete dumbo. Uh, I guess he's got a lot of going on in his mind at that point. He's trying to figure yeah, out what his next lie to Jasmine on. will be. So I guess that's a lot of work <laughs> now that he's running out of lies. Um, guys, this movie is cute. I love this movie. It, it, these characters are problematic. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh... It's, it's a situation. Uh, and then we start getting, we get into like the final third of the film and Jafar now has the lamp and he turns himself into the Sultan. I really like Jafar's white outfit. I thought it was super cool. Yeah. I thought it was cool when I was a kid. I think it's cool when I was adult. When he makes himself into a sorcerer and gets like just his spiky black outfit, I was always disappointed. I was like, <laughs> you could have better. Then Jafar uh, reveals that Prince Ali is actually Aladdin. And this, I almost threw my notebook at the television screen because Jasmine runs over to Aladdin and is like, Ali! And then Aladdin goes, I, Jasmine, I tried to tell you. And no, you did not. Not once did you yes, ever did. try to tell her. No. no, he did remember right before she pushed him out onto the balcony. He he came to tell her and she was like, oh, you're here. Father's making an announcement and the whole country has showed up. And he's like, no, I just need to talk to you. And then she just shoves him out. Okay. So he did. Right. He tried to tell her. Okay. And then I kind of wanted him he to didn't... say, don't cry for me, Argentina. That would have been really funny. It I would have been. been into that. Yep. I would have liked that. Don't cry for me, Agrabah. Don't cry for me, Agrabah. Because <laughs> that's where they're at. Um, uh, the truth is and... I cannot lead you. All through my <laughs> wild days. Anyway, we'll stay. Anyway. <laughs> I've never seen Evita, but I know the words to that song because I think everybody yeah. on the planet does. Yep, yeah, that's why. Everyone does. Um, so then Jafar is now a sorcerer and he turns the sultan into like this little jester guy. Uh, he turns Jasmine basically into Princess Leia from uh, yep. Java's palace. Yep, uh, it was very is, reminiscent again, of that. Crazy unfortunately, because she yeah. is fifteen years old. Yep. Um, and shackles and everything, and the red, and it's not good. Yes, yes. And then this is when suddenly Jafar wishes that Jasmine would love him, and yep. this is when my notes, you guys, at this point are just capitalized scribbles and frowny faces everywhere. Yeah, because it's not good. It's 
It's not good. I understand that in the culture, it would have been different. In the culture, 15-year-old girls got given to, like, 40, 50-year-old dudes all the time. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it okay. It still makes it very gross. It is very, very gross now because now we've got this 50, 60-year-old dude evil, like, 50, 60-year-old evil dude going after this princess. And and basically, I mean, like, if, first of all, we know that the genie can't make anybody love anyone. But if he could, then it's not her agency. And not only is Jafar, this is going to get real heavy. So, uh. Um, but a- anyway, just the implications are that he would be forcing himself upon her. Yes. Um, and she is a child. And it's gross and it's weird and it's unfortunate. And I'm glad that nothing. He, he calls her pussycat and I threw up in my <sighs> mouth and died. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, sick gross is what my note says just over and over and over again. Um, and then she kisses him to distract him from Aladdin, which, like, I get that. Like, you go, girl. Good job, like, keeping his attention on Again, you, but still yes, just, ugh, yep. bleh. Taking advantage of the situation, and, yeah. Bleh, yep. Vomit, blah, blah, blah. Um, she's amazing so, in that scene again. The scene is very problematic, but I think that she's amazing in it. Sure, yeah. She, I mean, I, again, if this were a woman pulling this off, it yeah. would be amazing. The fact that it's yes. a child pulling this off is problematic. So then Jafar gets turned into a genie and everything's great and he sucks in uh, uh, Iago into his lamp and Iago is not an all-powerful cosmic being and that parrot died in that lamp. I don't care <laughs> that we continue to hear his voice. That parrot is dead after like five minutes. You fling him <laughs> over into the Cave of Wonders. He's dead. Goodbye, Iago. And now Jafar is trapped in his lamp with a parrot corpse uh, for all eternity. <laughs> so then we go back to Aladdin saying he's only got the one wish left. And Genie's like, right. oh, I'll make you into a prince. He's still got two wishes, you guys. He did not use Which, one of them. And why did up, he anyway. stop being a prince? It doesn't That's make any sense. The entire me. wishing mechanism makes zero sense. Now that I'm a grown up and looking at this, when I was yeah. a kid, I was like, it all makes perfect sense. Now as a grown up, I'm like, this well, completely falls apart. Maybe because he got the new master, like all of his old wishes just went that away. That is possible, that make- and that is a question that I raised. So if if I have a genie, if I have the lamp, and uh-huh. I've only used. Uh, one of my wishes, but then you right. come in possession of the lamp. You've now got three wishes. If I take yes. the lamp back from you, do I still only have two or do I get three new ones? Because this is the other question I asked. Even if Aladdin did only have one wish left and he wished himself to be a prince, why not just hand the lamp over to, or why, I'm going to say that sentence again. Why not just hand the lamp over to Jasmine and say, hey, Jasmine, can you wish the genie free? She's right there. Yep. This I is don't problematic. Know. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Just I don't because know. fairy tales. Because fairy tales. <coughs> because fairy tales, I guess. And I guarantee in the original, like, uh, Arabian Nights, A Thousand and One, Scheherazade's Tales or whatever, that the princess was not nearly this involved in the entire process. Yeah, I'm sure that's so true. So yes. I guess yes. we just, like, sidestepped her. But anyway, I feel like Jasmine would have had really great, excellent, like, economic reform wishes and all kinds of whoever, what now. <laughs> And it would have been awesome, and she could have wished the genie free. However, Aladdin also could have, because he still had two wishes left. Um, so then the sultan shows up, and he's like, I decree the princess can marry whomever she wants. And, like, if you could have done this this entire time, what was the point of this film? Why? I don't. Why? Why? <laughs> Maybe he just you, needed extreme circumstances to show him how I guess so. Was. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and I'm never exactly. going to marry this girl off if I don't let her marry the street rat, I guess. <laughs> Oh, and so then he wishes the genie free, and then genie says, ask me for something, wish for something, wish for the Nile, tell me about the Nile. And Aladdin goes, uh, I wish for the Nile. Guess what, you guys? Aladdin now owns the Nile. Like, that was his third wish. The Nile now <laughs> belongs to Aladdin. But he's free. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, I just, I was so frustrated about the whole wishing thing at that point. And then genie uh, puts on his goofy hat and grabs his luggage and then tells Al, I'm going to miss you, Al, and gives him a hug and then leaves. And my very last note is, I miss you too, Robin Williams. Tough night, Sarah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like this was more of an emotional roller coaster than you were perhaps prepared for. That is exactly the case. Yes, I did not (laughs) imagine that this was, I mean, I hollered a lot. I have not yet had to scream on this podcast. And yet here we are. Uh, because it yeah. turns out that Aladdin, while a movie that I still adore and really enjoy, is a giant mess. Just yeah. all over the place. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's do the thing. Let's grade Jasmine. Okay. 
I'm, this should be robust. Okay, let's go. <laughs> robust, I like that. Okay, so now we get to the very scientific, very exact, very objective, subjective. Every week we make that joke, and every week I forget which one I'm actually supposed to be. <laughs> well, you Can keep saying honest? it's objective, and I keep on telling you, no, Sarah, no, it's not. It is subjective. <laughs> it is subjective. <laughs> Excruciatingly subjective. Exactly. Okay, so, all right, we are grading Princess Jasmine. Okay. Uh, it, she is graded in six different areas on a scale of one to five, and the first one we have is her autonomy. She was a very autonomous princess. Five. She nobody was making any decisions for her unless they right. literally had to use magic to yep. get her to do what they wanted. Yep. And so I think that makes her pretty autonomous. So five there. Next, five. her attitude. Okay, because here's um, the thing. She okay. has a lot of it. She's very yes. feisty. Like she is yes. not a cardboard box. No. But I don't particularly like her attitude a lot of the time. Sometimes I do, but a lot of the times I feel like I don't as much. Well, she's very sweet with her father. Yeah. So when she well, like I mean, cops of. an attitude, it's because I mean I feel like it was always warranted. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I she agree that stood she's up to not Jafar, like. So she was very brave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, her attitude in general. I mean, I guess it's really she's, good. I can't. She's maybe a little bit on the short-tempered side. So what do you think, a four? I'm thinking a four. That's exactly four what I Four is thinking. good. Yeah. We gave Ariel a four. That seems fair. There you go. And that seems about yeah. right, because they're on a yeah. pretty even field when it comes to attitude. Yeah. Yeah. You know, freaking 16-year-old girls, man. Yep. What can you do? Okay. Animal Companion. Raj is pretty cool, but not really involved in the uh, proceedings of the film. It's true. Raja is really cool, though. Like, every girl who watched the show wanted a tiger Wanted pet, a pet right? tiger, yeah. Yeah. And Raja did try to, like, jump to her defense whenever yeah. uh, Jafar was throwing his fire stuff around. Or and then his, he turned into a around. really cute little kitty. And then he was a baby kitty, and he was even cuter. Really? Um, but he didn't, again, he didn't, like, he, he did really not have- contribute... He was basically. He didn't just contribute a cat. to the story. Like if no, it's true. if we were grading Aladdin and if we were grading Abu, Abu he would give yeah. like a four or a five. But yeah. Abu is not Jasmine's animal companion. Raja is. So what do we think? Like a two I or still a three? feel like Raja's really cool. Yeah, I, I the lowest I'm willing to go is a three, and I'm even okay. That's to great because the highest I'm willing to go is a three. Okay, well three it is then. All right, attire. I don't like Jasmine's outfit. <gasps> what? It's so cool. I love the nah. colors. It's no, you don't like it at all. Nah, and the, the only one of her outfits that like, I liked, she did have three outfits, no, well, and a yeah. cloak, so technically four, through the film, okay, yeah. which was her blue outfit, the red uh, sexy outfit, uh, yeah. and then her uh, the purple, white, lilac dress that she was wearing, which I thought was pretty right. good. But otherwise, yeah, I just, I, I've never liked her outfit the most out of any of the Disney princesses. Hmm. Well, I definitely think it's really cool. I love her headpiece, too. I like the jewelry. One thing it does have going against it, in my opinion, is that I always feel a little uncomfortable with like the little girls wearing the Jasmine outfits, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 3.5. And it's funny because like she, I mean, she has a lot of her midriff showing, right? Well, so does Ariel. Yeah. But yeah. only when she's well, a mermaid. That's... When she's on land with people, she wears people clothes. <laughs> Well, and again, but that's cultural too. Well, okay, but I guarantee you that the only women wearing that outfit in that culture, in Jasmine's culture, were the prostitutes. I don't know who is allowing this princess to wear that outfit. The girl needs a mom, is what she needs. I don't know if that's true. Dude, with royalty, I don't. I don't think that's true. I think with royalty, have you seen? Was... Okay, have you seen the artwork that is uh, Disney princesses dressed in what the proper attire would be for their time period and their culture? It's really cool. I, mean, I will find it. Or rather, I have, but it was a long time ago, and I can't remember. Yeah, I'll find. I'll send it to you. On, I'll, I'll pin it to you on Pinterest. Sure. Yeah. Um, do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I could do. I could do a three. Like I don't, and that's me being generous. <laughs> okay. I feel like I don't think I, I'm I could comfortable do a with the three. I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, her songs. She has one. It is a duet. She does not have her own song. It's true, but it's an excellent. Excellent song. It's one of the Did best it win awards? Songs I forget. of all time. I'm pretty sure. Academy Award for Best Original Song. Okay. 
Literally yeah. an award-winning song. Yes, yeah. Uh, I can't give her a five because she does not have her own song and because this song is I, a duet. I think that's and it fair. Is the only one. I think it's fair to give her a four because it is a duet. And it's not her own okay. song, but it's wonderful. I can't go any lower than that because it's so good and because she's so great in it too. Yeah, she's pretty good. Not only is her voice great, but when she does the whole thing where she like throws out her arms and everything and does the the song. Yeah, it's a very pretty sequence. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's just yeah, great. It's totally great. Yeah, it's totally fine. Uh, next... How would Jasmine fare in a zombie apocalypse? I feel like she would not. I mean, she she might be able to pole vault over them, but... She learned pole vaulting in seconds. She has a pet tiger. She's very smart and cunning and quick on the uptake. She's not afraid of anything. Maybe I just am really prejudiced against Jasmine I would love to have Jasmine on my team. Man. Yeah, I mean, I guess she's better than Snow White and Aurora for sure. (laughs) What? Is she I'm better sorry. than is she better than Cinderella or Ariel to have on your zombie apocalypse team? She's definitely better than Cinderella to have on the apocalypse team. And Ariel I feel like she's on par about with on par Ariel. with Ariel. Yeah. Okay, is she better than Belle for your zombie apocalypse team? Yes. You think so? Really? Yeah, remember Belle was just good for like healing. Remember she was just like uh, wrap Belle up got your a wounds. Four. She did? Yeah, dude. I think it's because she stood up to the wolves and stuff. It might be. But and also she's she lived with the beast forever. Like Belle knows no fear. Belle is yeah. like fearless. <laughs> the girl is afraid of nothing. I Okay, Jasmine is very brave. I'll give yeah. you that. Um she is quick on the uptake, which is great. Ah uh, okay, so if I'm willing to give her a four. I don't good. I don't want to give I'm her I'm willing a, to give yeah. her a four. Yeah, I think okay, that that's that good sounds... and it's fair. Yep. Great. I like it. Okay. Okay, so that total puts Jasmine at a twenty three. Not bad. Where is that in, in I don't even remember where all of her other princesses are. So Jasmine is uh well, she's she's behind Cinderella, Ariel, and Belle. She is okay. a bef- she's ahead of Aurora and Snow White. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess that's we not so surprising. Actually Having it, yeah. watched the movie, I really thought that she was going to jump up quite a lot. Although I'm not surprised that Snow White is still down there in the bottom. Snow White and Aurora. Because well, I mean, Snow White was like our very first princess. They didn't. Really, I mean, like she just as far. I mean, like they're as very we're going sweet, on, we're sweet seeing, ladies. I mean, like our scores for these girls, like their autonomy alone has like just gotten higher and higher and That's higher. True. Like it just goes up and up. Um, well, Cinderella was like way higher than like Aurora, say. But I mean, right. uh-huh. Ariel, Belle, and Jasmine have all had fives in their uh, autonomy score because That's pretty awesome. uh, we finally yep. realized that. They were women, and women are people, too. <laughs> yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, solid 23. Not bad. She's not the worst. She is not the best. So Jasmine at a 23 is currently one, two, three, fourth on our list of the six Disney princesses that we have done so far. We have Cinderella in first place with 26. We've got Ariel in second place with 25. Belle with 24. Jasmine with 23. And then uh, Snow White with 16.5. And Aurora... With a whopping 12 out of 30. <laughs> wow, 12. That is yeah. bad. Girl got a lot of ones. And also <laughs> on her autonomy, didn't even get a one. We gave her a 0. 0.5. Oh, no. Poor, poor dear. I was going to say, she did climb those steps by herself, but then I remembered, nope, she was led nope, that way by the magic spell. <laughs> yeah. Aurora didn't choose to do a single thing. You want to know what Aurora chose to do? Uh, tell a strange man she just met in the woods where she lived and where he could find her. <laughs> That was what she chose to do. Oh, no. (laughs) That is ridiculous. Okay, so the next Disney princess we will be grading is going to be Pocahontas. Technically not a princess, but the chieftain's daughter, which I guess is close enough. (laughs) And we are going off the official Disney princess list so yes. we we are yes. listening to every you know whatever the mouse tells us to do that's what we're going to do exactly uh there will be no nala because nala is not a human so she's not on the disney princess list there will be no kita from uh uh atlantis because that movie flopped um Weird. They, just they because it flopped she could be a princess oh that's sad yeah Mm-hmm. The movie didn't make enough money, so uh, she's not included. We will not be doing Bummer. Enchanted because she is not technically a Disney princess because uh, they can't pay Amy Adams to traipse around Disneyland all day long. Yep, for sure. And yeah, so that's what's going to be happening next week. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for listening to the show. If you like Disney Princess Deathmatch, if you enjoy what we do here, if you would like to support us and help us do more ridiculous, objective, subjective shows like this about the things <laughs> that we love, then you can support us by going over to patreon.com slash common room radio. 
And you can kick us a dollar a month or whatever you can afford and help us to, uh, you know, bring you more podcasts. That money uh-huh. goes directly into creating more shows for you. Yes. And that's all that we want to do in life. If we could it's so just true. Uh, spend our lives just making stuff for you to enjoy, yep. then that would be super duper awesome. That would and be really, really awesome. great. So help yep. us achieve our weird dreams um, <laughs> by heading over to our Patreon. If you want to join in the conversation, if you want to tell us, uh, if okay, yeah, if you want to get over on Twitter and and let us know, like, am I right and is Jasmine kind of the worst or is Liz right and Jasmine is kind of the best? You can jump over to Twitter and you can reach us together at Common Room Cast. You can reach me personally at Elsa Grab the Salt. I'm Lizbeth Ray 555. And you can jump onto Twitter and join that conversation and let us know what you think. Yeah, use um, the hashtag DPDM. Yes, hashtag Disney Princess Death. Well, DPDM, short uh-huh. for Disney Princess Deathmatch because... Disney Princess Deathmatch is a ridiculously long hashtag, and we probably could not use that. Um, (laughs) Thank you guys so, so much for listening to the show, and we will see you next week. Looking for a mind at work, work. She found one. She did, yes. Just saying.